Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello to you and welcome back to the channel where today you join me at Brabus in Germany to take a look at this angry beast behind me, the Brabus S-Class 800. Based on the facelifted S63 AMG from Mercedes, this thing, as the name suggests, has 800 horsepower along with 1,000 newton meters of torque from the 4-litre bi-turbo V8, making it not only incredibly powerful, but also one of the most luxurious ways to get around possible. This is the ultimate gangster baller support car. Today we're going to take a quick walk around talk about the Brabus modifications, then go out for a test drive to see what it's like on the roads before coming back and fully exploring the luxury interior that this car has inside. So let's get started and check out the new Brabus S-Class 800. As per tradition for Brabus, the S-Class here is presented in straight black. You can immediately see some of the aerodynamic add-ons and we'll open up the bonnet in a moment to have a look at the engine itself. But this is based on the facelifted S63 AMG that was introduced last year. So that meant a number of updates visually, including new headlights, but the engine was changed from the older 5.5 litre V8 to the new 4 litre by turbo V8 that we find across the range. So Brabus had actually made a 900 horsepower version of the previous car, called the Brabus rocket along with 1400 newton meters by enlarging the engine from 5.5 to 5.9 this one is still four liters as per factory spec but upgraded with new turbos and we can run over some of the numbers in a moment just as we walk around it though it's quite discreet but in a really cool way when you start looking at some of the additional parts that are added on the carbon fiber add-ons for example back here the lip spoiler running the full width the logos are changed to the Brabus logo the 800 designation in black discreet and stylish if you come down towards the lower part of the rear, there's a new carbon fibre diffuser, a switchable exhaust system that, believe me, sounds phenomenal. In the centre, you have the Formula One style safety light back there for the reversing light at the base of the diffuser. If we come round to the side, it's running on new wheels, a large wheel. They have a number of different options, but 21 inches front and rear finished in gloss black on this car. The side skirt of the standard car is already pretty aggressive, so that's kept original, but the Biturbo 800 badging here and this new flared out front fender just looks really cool, has so much presence. Then you come round to the front. Now, the one thing I'm gonna say that I don't like too much at the front is the radar sensor in the grill. It just seems a little bit not quite right, but it's a new Brabus grill, new badging up at the top. If we come down towards the bottom, you've got the extended front splitter again, Brabus logos, the new carbon fiber parts around these intakes for cool of this engine up at the front. The new headlights, as I mentioned, as part of the facelifted version of the S-Class, but the carbon fiber splitter comes around and has those end plates to the sides of it also. But let's just come around and pop open the engine. This car doesn't have Brabus's completely reworked interior. It's the S63 AMG interior as per factory. They can do a complete overhaul in any colors or configuration you could possibly dream up. But just to reach down here and open up this engine bay, because we need to talk about the numbers. This is the big headlight feature of this car. Take a look at that. So underneath the carbon fiber plate over the top that you can see probably has gold metallic flake inside it. This is the 4 litre bi-turbo V8 made by AMG in a falter back except they've taken it up from the standard 612 horsepower up 188 to 800. The standard torque is 900. This car is 1000. Those numbers are absolutely absurd. It means it can do the sprint to 100 kilometers an hour in just 3.1 seconds and onto a limited top speed of 300. Now, 300 isn't necessarily as fast as this car could go. Potentially, it could do 340 or 350, but to protect the car, that is where it's limited to 186 miles per hour. More than fast enough for a normal drive, and it looks cool up there as well with this cover over the top. So this is a veritable weapon of an engine. We've seen that from various different cars. My AMG GTR, it's the same unit as per the E63S as well, but now with an incredible power output. And when they released this car, they simultaneously released the upgrades to the E63S along with that. So let's come around, just have a quick look at the interior. It's been sitting with the air conditioning running in case you're wondering what's going on. It might not be the sunniest day right now, but it's still reasonably warm out here. And let's just start it up which brings our wide cockpit display into life. There is so much going on inside this car that it's gonna take me forever to explain what all of these buttons do, how all of this comes together, what random things you have, like the fragrance dispenser tucked away in there, the night vision, just to press some buttons here and show you around what we've got. I just need to lower the air conditioning, which you do with the fan speed here. We 
don't want that blowing quite so much at us. There we go, a little bit better. But basically, it has everything that you could possibly want from this kind of car. And if we put it into Sport Plus mode, it also does this. Sounds stupidly cool. If I just come around actually, just to the back, just even the idling noise. You can hear it burbling away with intent. Such a cool thing. Just have a look at the rear of the car as well. So you can see what we've got going on in here. Smart, isn't it? We'll come back here and run through everything shortly. But let's just jump in now and take this car out for a little drive on the road to see what it's like. Getting moving in here, it's an S-Class. It is quiet, it is smooth, it is comfortable, it feels nice, it feels relaxed, it feels like a great place to be. That's what you expect. But what I know is when you're out on the autobahn, this is going to transform into a completely different animal. It has driving in the normal mode at the moment, all your usual features like a, I think a nine speed gearbox that's shifting between everything seamlessly at the background, cylinder deactivation, so if I just back off, we go down from the full eight cylinders down to four and you're cruising efficiently and economically, but then you can configure your individual mode or just put it up into sport or sport plus where everything will get a little bit sharper, a little bit noisier, the suspension, the exhaust mode, the dampers, the traction settings, everything like that. We go out onto the autobahn, I'm gonna press the uh, shift paddles because who doesn't want even more noise out of it? The bangs and cracks you get are just fantastic. When we pull out and in a moment, we'll get an opportunity just to accelerate. Now there we go, you see if you're indicating, you've got the uh, lane monitoring. I think we can go out now, here we go. And accelerate away. But technology loaded to the absolute brim. I mean, they're just pulling away gently, to be honest. It had lots and lots of torque. I love that. Whoa! Okay then, yep, it pulls hard. It pulls very, very hard. Unfortunately, a speed limited section now. So we have to slow straight back down, but then we can put it back into normal and just enter a comfort mode and then enter a completely relaxed style of driving because it's a quiet S-Class with goodness knows how much glazing on the windows, materials, thick materials that just dampen all the sounds, a suspension system that rides so gently. This is what you want for a long distance drive or for a car that has practicality. You can be working away in the back. There's a decent boot. This thing has a fridge in it too. We're coming up towards the de-restricted sign though. So let's just prepare this for a moment. Go into Sport Plus. Get ready to accelerate away. And off we go. Oh my goodness. This thing is fast, 200 already. Wow. Okay, that was 100 to 200 and something very, very quickly, very quickly. That's where this car is in its element, in its forte. It's a big, heavy car, remember? This is an S-Class. Yes, it could be heavier. They've used lightweight materials to make it, but at the end of the day, you're moving a very large lump and it's doing it in a completely effortless way with such fantastic systems around you in terms of the safety, in terms of the displays. I know the audio system in here is absolutely fantastic. It's got the full Burmester sound system, which is brilliant. Basically, everything about it this is completely in its element. This is a car built to attack the autobahns and attack them hard. Well, a traffic jam is no fun, but here is where we can use the adaptive cruise control, set it, and the car will take over and do everything for us in a nice smooth way, which is again, exactly what you want. It will break us down or accelerate us back up again when the speed picks back up. I've got a nice head up display. I've got just about everything. Cooling seats I can turn on because it's getting a little bit warm, you know. I've got massaging seats. I've got a blind for the rear window if I felt the sun was behind me. I didn't touch the brake there, by the way. The car did it all for me. Um, open and close the blind at the back. Yeah, you know, literally everything that you could want in the middle of a car, this thing has inside it. I'm just pressing buttons and exploring around. Cup holders hidden away neatly under there. We've got um, touchpad wireless charging for mobile phones. We can, like I said, go through, turn on the, the uh, fragrance sensor. We've got track pace where we can for use on racetracks only. This isn't really a racetrack, this is a traffic jam. But it literally sets laps. Do you know what? I've gone and been a fool. I've turned on my heated seat instead of my cooling seat. But we've got heated seats as well. The track setup where you can install and set up track races. I've still not touched the pedals, by the way. Um, driver profiles and the like. Uh, you've got, you name it, dynamic select where you can set up your individual configuration. So if you wanted to have in here, for example, the powertrain, suspension, transmission, 
um, various things in sporty mode, some things in comfort. So you could have the whole lot sporty and the suspension comfort if you wanted. I had a first drive in the S-Class, this model, when it came out. And here's one thing that's cool. As you turn the dial, when you reach the end and there are no more options, it actually physically stops turning. It's got a like link to the software to block you from turning it further. Just nice things like that, nice features, nice details. Everything you touch feels really quality and premium. The steering wheel that was introduced is a lovely thing with loads of controls. You've got separate thumb pads for the different displays depending what you'd like to go through and do. You can change the lighting of the interior. You can have the settings that will harmonize the whole experience, the fragrances, the lighting, and the drive settings depending on your mood. This thing is literally completely loaded to the top. The S-Class has always had that reputation for being a car that offers you everything in one car in terms of the technology levels. And you really experience that when you're driving in here. I mean, just, I absolutely love it. I absolutely love it. And this is the driving side. You can sit in the back and have the same level of comfort. And we'll experience more of that when we pull over, when we get back and just be completely relaxed and chilled back there. Sitting in that traffic jam was no fun, but now we've got a slightly less busy autobahn. So foot down and the speed pickup is just mega. You can feel it through the whole of your body just pulling you into the back of the seat, pulling you hard. And even in a small run like that, we're straight up to 222 kilometers per hour. It's fantastically fast, honestly. The speed, I mean, it should be, right? The numbers, but it's the torque, the 1,000 Newton meters of torque. That's what you feel that's sucking you back into these incredibly voluptuous seats. You've got a lot of comfort to them. The padding, the leathers, the materials, the headrest is soft and padded, but you're pulled into the back of them as you accelerate with your foot down hard to the floor. It's a great feeling, very, very exciting, and so, so quick. Just a short spurt, just putting the power down. No problems. I, I, it's fast. This thing is really fast. So just a quick run on the autobahn. Some downshifts with the crackles. You probably don't get too much of that through on the camera. I imagine from my experience that you don't hear as much of this car as I hear and feel on the inside of it. But when you downshift, you get some lovely cracks going off. Burbles and bangs. I mean, this engine is famous for that. And then give it a slightly louder exhaust and you get this. I mean, if I put down the window just a touch, we can hear a little bit more of that. Maybe. Good sound. Oh, too early on the downshift. Still too early. Anyway. Yeah, there we go. Right, let's close that back up. It gets so much quieter. It'll get even more quieter if I, uh, more quiet if I put it back into comfort mode. So, what do we think then? about the Brabus 800. Well, the power delivery is incredible. There's no negative impacts by taking the car up nearly 200 horsepower. It has new turbos, plenty more work has been done, obviously, to make that possible. The exhaust, uh, the tuning, uh, the engine mapping as well. But it feels like they could release this from Mercedes. I mean, Brabus work very, very closely with Mercedes on products like this um, to offer you know, a package that feels connected and complete my goodness it's a fantastic piece of kit and it still has stop start as well you know all the all the usual creature comforts that you'd want out of a thing like this very nice very very nice so let's pull back into Brabus because I need to show you what's going on back there to the palace of luxury that is the rear of the s-class we go so feast your eyes in here the finest materials everywhere but so much tech and comfort so if i take a step in we can run through some of this the engine is running so you can see those big displays going on up front but back here i mean let's start with the seats the lounge seats that you have you can see the way there's room for them to lie back and give you a more comfortable relaxing position the headrests are these pillow cushions thick soft cushions that you have up there in the center between the seats back here you have a fridge if you want to have some bottles in there, I think there's room for two or three if you use the top shelf as well, bottles to squeeze into the fridge. That does impede slightly on the boot space. You can also set it to different temperatures, depending how you want to have that cooling. Fold that back away. I love the way this kind of wraps around at the back. It just feels very enclosed and cosy. In the armrest, or rather the front of the armrest, you have this peculiar thing. This is a wireless charger for your phone. You know, put your phone in there. But it doesn't look very pretty or fit in with the rest of this car. It's just kind of 
bolted in. That's one thing I find particularly awkward and I'm not the biggest fan of. If we open up the armrest though, back here, you can see, well, not only do we have four USB ports for charging everything you can imagine. Those are high speed chargers, five volts. That's actually quite significant. And an HDMI port for plugging in inputs to the displays. But you also have the tables that will fold out and open up and slide around that away. If you want to get your laptop out and work back here in comfort, no problem. That's all easily done. The rear seats have memory seats as well as heating and cooling, that you can see. So you've got settings galore. Work out how to put that back in. That wasn't too hard. You've still got some space even when those are uh, closed up. Ah, oh, that clicks like that. Easy. Could open up my side as well, but I think you get the point how that works. And then awkwardly in front of this, you have a cubby hole down here that has in it the 12 volt socket, so your usual cigarette socket. But that is very hard to get to given that this sticks out awkwardly in the way of it. Anyway, moving on to the next cubby hole. Here you have your cup holders. They're not only cup holders though, they can also cool or warm up your drink. So you've got blue if you want to keep your coke cold or red if you want your coffee to be warm. If you like nerdy things, that is super cool. I love it. Anyway, let's close that back up for the moment. In front of that, you've got your climate controls just like you have in the front, automatic, uh, dual zone, so it's actually quad zone technically for the entire car um, and settings that you'd expect to find there. Then moving around, another thing I'm not the biggest fan of to be honest is the plasticiness of this uh, seat compartment on the back of the seat. I'm not really sure who carries a map around these days anyway, but that's awkwardly shaped because you know if you try and put a document in there it's going to be folded round. Anyway, above that you've got the uh, tablet which will show you various things, music, navigation, that kind of stuff, quite high res. Um, fixed tablet on the back of the seat does the job on and off then over to the door here You have the option to control the front seat So you can move the front seat forwards if you'd like a little bit more leg room You can get rid of that lean it forwards get it completely out of the way or you can directly put the seat in lounge mode Which will tuck that seat as far forwards as possible that goes up as well as forwards It's folding the screen. It's folding the headrest so it gets out of the way so it can go as far Literally out of the way as it could possibly go there we go, headrest is all the way down, it's disappeared from our view. That will now get out of the way, I can put my legs pretty much straight already under the back of there, and then I think in a moment my seat is going to start moving into a bit of a lounge position. Yep, here we go, it's doing its thing. I can't really easily show you this because one hand is pressing the button and the other is holding the video camera. But I am now flying back with a footrest that's coming up as well underneath me. Oh, that sounded nice. That was an S-Class as well, by the way, in the background. But, here we go. Oh, there's a footrest that comes out of the front as well. Okay, I hadn't seen that coming. There we go. I'm now, that noise in the background is cool, but I'm now lying back, having a rest inside an S-Class in a lounge seat. Is this not the ultimate businessman's traveling machine? You've got your laptop tables if you need them. You've got a lounge seat if you want to have a rest. I feel like I need one of these in my life at some point. Let me just step out actually so you can see what this looks like. This isn't too awkward with the seat up. I guess it's almost like being in a business class seat in a plane. It doesn't go completely flat, but it's not exactly bad. Then you've got all of your buttons to revert it uh, back to normal if you wish. Uh, oh wait, maybe we shouldn't slide that seat. Oh, you can, um, you know, tucking all of these different parts back. Oh, you can do them all at once, magic. And we're just about done, so we can put the seat back into a normal position. There we go. Magic. Nice and easy. All reverted. So like I said, you've got your heated seats, your cooling seats, window buttons. You've also got the uh, curtains for the windows, so if we put the windows down, that will fold away and tuck itself in at the bottom. And then the window itself is a second press, tinted windows, naturally. Pull those back up. And then this is for the rear window too, so can we just pull the uh, nets back up here at the back? Oh, I'd already put it back up. There we go, you can see that vanishing and the sunroof opening as well. How cool is all of this? I could spend forever playing with all of these different buttons, playing with the gizmos in the rear of an S-Class. So, leave that for the moment. Just head quickly to show you inside the trunk. Power fold tailgate naturally, but there we have the fridge. So you can see what I said by it takes up a little bit of space in an awkward position in the center of the boot that you have to then fit your luggage around. But hey, it's a fridge in the back of a car, which is always cool. So let's actually now come through to the front of the S-Class, which is normally where I'd have started my detailed overview of the interior. But I think in this car, it deserved to be started at the back 
and you can see a little bit more around this the widescreen virtual cockpit with the dual digital displays that you can customize so if you go back to home using the left menu you can see in here if we cycle through you've got a number of different things you can customize the head-up display can you just see that with the various bits of information going on floating there you can change the design so we're in the classic at the moment but you've got the option to go through different displays depending what you'd like to see this controls your adaptive cruise control and your limiter you flick between limiter and cruise control you can see it changing in the bottom left uh, of the speedometer display but literally you've got so many different screens and things you can set and show and change on this car it is quite frankly absurd i mean the amg performance information here if you want to know more about your g-forces or how much boost you're using you have access to all of that or how your current configuration is set up to the left are your assistances so you have your lane steering assist that's where of course if you remove your hands for the wheel it would let you keep you in the lane it would guide you between the lines then you have uh, your lane sensor so if you do start drifting without indicating the steering will vibrate away at you then you have the button to turn off the parking sensors if they're annoying you then you have your infrared then you have uh, some information uh, I'm not entirely sure what the information button does and then you have the option to raise the suspension of the entire car to make it slightly easier to get in and out or to get over and low bumps uh, should you have a problem with that so you have a lot of different buttons here and beneath that you have your light controls obviously over here we've got all the seating controls for the front seat you can move the front right seat as well from this control panel uh, the Burmester sound system which watch the speakers when you turn it on if you're not familiar with this as you turn on the music they kind of swirl themselves out and turn on which is just cool if we turn that back off they then tuck away again continuing through to the middle so the main screen in the center of course again you can press to go back to home has an awful lot of configuration and when i say an awful lot i really and truly mean the most astonishing amount of things that you can go through even starting off in the seat the driver's seat passenger you can control the massaging seat dynamic seat lumbar control this is your side bolsters it's absolutely absurd how much access you have in here dynamic select where you can individual configure the different settings like we ran through uh, the climate control side of things if you want to you know set up your air freshener and ionization <laughs> it's it just goes on and on footwell temperature if you want your feet to be warmer than the rest of you you can do that settings for the rear it's all in there track pace setting it for track laps assistance settings all of your safety and security so it's going to recognize traffic lights if you're running on cruise control um, and it sees sorry traffic signs if you're running on cruise control and it sees a lower speed limit it can lower you down to the new speed limit uh, gps based as well camera and park assistance so obviously the car will help you park that's becoming standard at the top level of technology um, here we go you can see what that says reduces speed ahead of bend so this is where the car knows from the navigation what's coming up and if it sees a bend coming it will slow it down a little bit just to make the ride a little bit more comfortable active lane keep assist lane change, change assist blind spot assist night vision assist you name it assist is all in here consumption probably not too interested in consumption it's an 800 horsepower v8 after all um i'm not sure what that's telling us in all its detail but light settings if you want to have different ambient lights intelligent lights and things going on all through it and then finally vehicle settings where you can turn on a speed limiter for the winter tires and change a few more regular things there's a lot going on in there and that's before we got to the system settings with the displays and audio settings oh my gosh you could literally go through this forever if we come down through the center stack though you have the nice display with the iwc watch in the center the air conditioning controls here with your window heaters as well in the center you have this area again with wireless charging available cup holders they're not heated and cooled though in the front there's a hidden stowage there tray if you want to hide something away to not be seen you wouldn't necessarily know that was lurking there over towards the passenger side glove box as per usual with the fragrances and various different holders for a pen and for cards and the like and then passenger has much the same controls as the driver here you have some hotkeys to get to various functions so the seat controls navigation radio media telephone um, and the car settings page that will interact with your infotainment home and reverse the scroller toggle to go through the different menus if you want to do it with a more physical feel then you've got your automatic start stop going through your different driving modes manual gearbox traction control if you do go through your different driving modes you will see that the display changes slightly depending how you have it set up and in the center screen you get a display of what that mode 
involves. On the right hand side you've got the 360 cameras, audio on and off, your three adaptive suspension modes, so soft, normal or sportier, and your exhaust open and close and you can hear the valve as it closes by pressing that button as well. This is your in input so you can actually kind of write on there and directly input what you would like it to have and then phone charging pad, more USB ports and an SD card as well in the driver's armrest. Wow, that's a quick introduction. So what we haven't done yet is just listen to this. It sounds delightfully angry, doesn't it? But let's shut it off for the moment. And you have comfort features like the steering wheel raising just to make it slightly easier to get your knees out. And I've also got the key here, the Mercedes AMG key with your usual buttons for lock, unlock, opening and closing the powerful boot as well. You can also open the boot from the button down here by the uh, driver's door pockets. But let's step out just to take a last little look around this fantastic piece of kit. It is a spectacular car. It is so cool so powerful but so luxurious as well it's just a complete package for epicness if this is the kind of thing you want you literally can't get better than a brabus 800 it's a formula that they're using across the range on different models it's an engine of course that is familiar now from other models too so the upgrades can be done on the e-class the g-class the various different cars that you can see around us here some pretty special ones as well right in front of us but this thing has just been mega really really enjoyed the drive as i expected to do really really enjoyed the feature level the equipment level that it carries just incredible really 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 cool things i hope you've enjoyed this look at the brabus s800 based on the facelifted s class i've certainly enjoyed the drive so a big thanks to them for the opportunity and as always guys thank you very much for watching make sure to be subscribed to see the latest videos ring the bell button for instant notifications and i'll catch up with you again next time cheers <laughs>